Hello, Internet. Welcome into Titans Tube yet again. The Titans are coming off a short week this week, so in turn, that means Titans Tube is also going to be having a short week. But first, before we get into this preview breakdown, we have some do thanks to give. Caleb, who are we thanking today? We are thanking our newest members of our Patreon account. Yes. Which, yes. If, which, if you didn't know, we started a Patreon account. You can find the link in the description. And we've had a few first members that will forever go down into the Titans Tube lore. If you want to join that crew, just follow the link and come on board. We would really like to thank the following people for um, their continued support monetarily of Titans Tube. Uh, mainly, the people named Speed Jacob, Eric Lenard, Anil Kisara. Jared Newman, Jake Shook, and Craig Murray, and not least but last, Nick Clem. Thank you so much for being the first round of patrons we have uh, to support Titans Tube so we can keep on doing what we love to do. do. Amen. Amen, brother. Yeah, if, if you would like to find a way to support this channel, you can become a member as well of Patreon. We greatly appreciate it. It would go a long way in helping us continue making videos about the Titans. Speaking of the Titans, we have a game coming up. You speak truly, Justin. Mm -hmm. The Titans will be traveling to the Steel City of Pittsburgh to take on the AFC North leading Pittsburgh Steelers, who are currently sitting at 7-2. And very similar to the Titans, the Steelers are also riding their own four-game winning streak. Uh, so we're looking at a pretty premier AFC matchup right here. Let's just take a moment to assess and appreciate the situation that the Titans are in right now. Two years ago, we were coming off back-to-back -back seasons winning five games total. Oh. And now the Titans are uh, finding themselves in a premier AFC matchup in mid-November going into Pittsburgh in a primetime TV game against a national audience with massive playoff implications on the line. Let's pretend the Titans do pull off this win against the Steelers. Now we're talking about uh, possibly the Titans setting themselves up to grab a top two seed, uh, a bye week in the playoffs. Well, whoa, 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 hold, hold whoa. me back, hold me back. We can't, we can't get too far ahead. Like, no, no. We, there's a lot of football to be played. It's only week 11, but it's still fun to speculate on that kind of stuff. Uh, so looking at their 7-2 and two record, uh, the Steelers are having uh, another Steelers-like season. They're leading the AFC North, yada yada, what else is new? Uh, but let's let's look at some of their best wins. They do have some good ones, one being at home to the Minnesota Vikings and also one being at Kansas City. Never an easy place to play. Uh, and their two losses they suffered were against the Bears in overtime. And they also lost at home to the Jacksonville Jaguars in an ugly performance where Big Ben threw five interceptions. Zuh. But let's start off here with Pittsburgh's passing offense against the Titans secondary. Uh, Big Ben is, is the name of the game here. On the season, he has 12 touchdown passes, but is having a bit of a turnover issue with 10 interceptions on the season most of them coming in that Jacksonville game. But his 10 interceptions are tied for third most in the league. Yes, he still is amongst the best in the business. Uh, he's probably Hall of Fame bound, does have a couple Super Bowl titles to his name, but he does have his spurts and tendencies to make poor decisions and turn the ball over. And, and <laughs> with his age, he's just getting so fat and old that he can barely move. I mean, <laughs> He hasn't even made it to the line of scrimmage himself this year because he currently has negative six rush yards on the season. So okay. come on, man. Just take a few steps forward and you can get there. But no, no. You can't. So if the defense, our defense is going to have to generate pressure because if we don't, we're going to be in trouble with the weapons that they have. Yes. Um, do I mean, do I need to even mention Antonio Brown easily a top three wide receiver in the league? Uh, I mean, a lot of people consider him the best in the game, uh, and there's no surprise that he is actually leading the league in receiving yards once yeah. again. Yeah. But complimenting their all-pro receiver Antonio Brown is their second-round pick, their rookie out of USC, Juju on the Juice Smith-Schuster who is having himself a pretty stellar rookie season so far. He's accumulated 521 receiving yards and leads the team with five touchdowns. So, uh, Adore Jackson, bro, you need to lock up your 
fellow alum from USC and take him out of the game. It's actually a good thing for the Steelers that Juju has broken through through on this offense because Martavis Bryant, uh, he's kind of gotten a lot quieter in this offense. He still is third on their team in receiving yards, but only 260 so yards. So he's not having a big impact, but you know, with his size and speed, his all around athleticism, he can still make a difference uh, in this game. So we, we cannot overlook that guy right there. Yeah, and at the tight end position, they utilize Jesse James. Him, along with his brother Frank James, headed a gang of outlaws named the James Younger Gang in the 19th century. Based out of Missouri, Jesse and his gang gained notoriety robbing banks, stagecoaches, and trains what? across the Midwest. What, 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 what in the world are you talking about? What are you doing? I'm talking about Jesse James. A 19th century outlaw or the Steelers' tight end? What are you... We're going to move on. Pittsburgh gets the edge in this category. Uh, I know our secondary has been playing better over the past few games, but this is the best offense that the Titans will have faced this year. They've got lots of talent. So, uh, Bayard, Adoree Jackson, Logan Ryan, Sims, Cyprian, you best be on your toes in this game. That's all I'm saying. But I, I think we got to give them the edge here. Be on your toes, bros. All right, Justin, shut shut up. Shut up. Speak. Shut up. Let's move on to the Titans passing attack versus the Pittsburgh secondary. Okay. Uh, statistically, the Pittsburgh defense is allowing the second least pass yards per game at 182, and they're only giving up 16.4 points per game, which is also second best in the league. So, I mean, if you had to put a number on how good their defense is playing, I would probably say it's, like, second best. But, however... It changes this week because they took a big blow against the Colts last Sunday when Mr. Joe Hayden had a fibula injury, which the Titans are very familiar with fibulas, yes. uh, and it's probably going to sideline him for the rest of the season. And who else to step up and take his place but former Titan Cody Sensiball? We know about Cody Sensiball, and we probably shouldn't be that worried because he couldn't stick around on the Titans team. But we'll see. On the other side of the field... Artie Burns is the other cornerback for the Steelers, and at, at the safety positions, they have Sean Davis and Mike Mitchell covering the back end. But surprisingly, when you look at the individual performance in the passing defense, it is a linebacker that is leading this defense in passes defensed with 10 and intercepted passes with three in Ryan Shazier. And he also leads their team in tackles. So Ryan Shazier uh, looks to be the leader of that defense. He is all over the field. The Titans are definitely going to have to be wary of where he is on the field at all times. That's true, Justin. But 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 hold on here, because I'm, I'm going to throw you something here. And you can either I'm keep open. it and hold on to it and believe it, or, or you can throw it right back at me. Okay. Uh, and I'm saying that I see the second-ranked passing defense, but I also see their schedule. And the best QBs that the Steelers have faced so far are Alex Smith, Matthew Stafford, and Andy Dalton. Doesn't uh, scare me. And I think Mariota belongs at least in that tier, if not better than that tier. Stafford might be right there with him, but uh, that coupled with the fact that Joe Hayden is out, and I think this category is a lot more even than the numbers project. Should we call this matchup a push? I'm going to hold on to it because that is the biased reasoning that we here at Titans Tube value and love to utilize. So um, <laughs> I believe a push it is. Push it. Let's now move on to Pittsburgh's rushing attack versus the Titans' front seven. Now, we already mentioned that in the passing game, the Steelers already have the NFL's leading receiver in receiving yards in Antonio Brown. But as for their rushing game, they... They also have the league's leading rusher. That, that's not fair. Who are we going to game plan for? Uh, it's, great. It's, it's true. Fantastic. It's true. Uh, Le'Veon Bell currently leads the league in rushing yards with 840. Uh, however, he's already carried it a massive 220 times, which only nice. adds up to 3.8 yards a toke. I mean, I'm, I mean, tote. Oh. Sorry. Freudian slip when it comes to Le'Veon Bell. We know what's on your uh, mind. Anyways, which that is just tied for 27th best in the league, which isn't that good. So you're saying Le'Veon is their bell cow running back. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, bell cow. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Well, despite Le'Veon Bell currently leading the league in rushing, as a team, as a whole, by the numbers, the Steelers only are averaging the 18th most rushing yards per game. Whereas for the Titans, we're only giving up the sixth least amount of rush. We're sixth best in rushing defense is what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, if you look at the numbers like that, you would think that the Titans would have the advantage, right? Uh, Justin, this is a hard one because Le'Veon Bell is a star in the league. He can flip the tides of a matchup that would seemingly be, on paper, extremely even. I really want the Titans to get the edge. I just love the Titans. Let's just call this even right now, right. okay? I don't know if that's our bias coming out because a lot of people would say Le'Veon Bell has the edge against any team, but come on. Titans have been pretty stout in the run game. Stout. Let's keep that streak going. No 100-yard no rushers allowed. Now let's move on to the Titans rushing game versus the Steelers front seven. We did see improvement from the Titans rushing attack last Sunday against the Bengals. DeMarco Murray got himself a couple touchdowns, including a third receiving touchdown to win the game. Uh, Derrick Henry also looked better. He looked a little more spry with some pep in his step. Sprinkle in some more Adoree Jackson again. And uh, Marcus Mariota gained himself some 51 rushing yards on the ground last week. You're right, Justin. After 10 weeks of football, the Titans, surprisingly, are averaging the eighth most rushing yards per game. A lot of fans, I think, would be shocked at how high we are. Yeah, a lot of people think our running game is struggling yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, and uh, the Steelers' defense is just right outside the top 10 in, in their rushing defense at number 11, holding opponents to 102 yards per game rushing. On that Steelers front seven, they do have some solid, if not great players playing for them. We already mentioned Ryan Shazier leading their team in tackles, interceptions, and passes defensed. Uh, but as for their sack numbers, uh, they've got quite a few sacks. They currently have 29 as a team, which is tied for second in the NFL with the Panthers and Chargers. Uh, leading their team in sacks is defensive end Cameron Hayward and linebacker Vince Williams with five apiece. Also, linebackers Bud Dupree and TJ Watt. We have to deal with another guy named Watt now. Uh, have four apiece. We're coming off a game where Mariota was sacked four times and hurried a number of times more than that. Mm -hmm. um, our O-line is going to have to have a great game here if we want to win this one and still be considered one of the best O-lines in the league. So how do you see this matchup playing out? Who do you think gets the edge? It seems to be another another close call. I, would, I think I would give the slight edge to the Titans in this one. Really? With, with how Mariota has returned to form after his hamstring injury rushing the ball, and with how we're now sprinkling in little tidbits of Adoree Jackson and Taewon Taylor in the run game, I think that's really given our run game another dynamic that we haven't seen and is helping out the whole aspect of it. So I think we get the edge. I'm quickly going over this, um, I'm just going to say as a team for the Steelers, their longest kick return on the season went for 25 yards. Their longest punt return on the season has gone for 15 yards. Uh, Chris Boswell is 20 for 23 on field goals. Uh, he's missed one PAT. The exact same stat line for Ryan Suckup. Three missed field goals, one missed PAT. But Ryan Suckup has gotten more volume, <laughs> so that's that's an advantage, right? And for the punting, I don't even know who their punter is, but his name certainly isn't Brett. Uh, I kicked a punt so far last game that the league sent a drug test request to me. Kern. <clears throat> it's a long name. It's a long name he has, but... Um, but yeah, Brett Kern is, is clearly better. Uh, yeah, you're right, Justin. Those suck-ups streak of field goals under 50 yards came to an end last week. <laughs> it's okay. He just started a new one. Now he's got one made field goal in a row from 50 or less yards. True. True. He's like a phoenix rising from the ashes, starting a new streak. That's what phoenixes do. But, but, I mean, come on. As a whole, the Titans special team is a lot better than the Pittsburgh special teams. That's yeah. got to be their one weak area right now. Yes. Moving on to predictions and keys to the game, Justin. I want to know your key to this game. It's on Thursday night. It's in prime time. It's up in the Steel City. It might be a cold one. Before I give my keys, I think it's worth noting that these coaching staffs, they have to, like, be extremely familiar with each other because we know Mike Malarkey and Dick LeBeau spent long stints in Pittsburgh on that team, so they're familiar with Mike Tomlin. Uh, Mike Munchak is the Steelers' offensive line coach. Cody Sensabaugh plays for him. 
Justin Hunter plays for him. There's a lot of mixing and matching going on with these two teams. So it could go, it could go either way. I think the coaching preparation and game plan uh, is going to be a huge factor. As far as the play on the field goes, the key for me, I think, is going to be turnovers. And I'm going to go with both sides of the, of the ball here. It's, Mariota has now almost been, unfortunately, consistent with throwing a bad interception in mm. games recently. And it's like, I mean, we're, the Titans are going to have to play an extremely good game all around. And that includes Mariota has got to take care of the football 100%. You can't have a crucial turnover giving the ball to this offense because they can destroy you with that. And on the other side, we know Ben Roethlisberger is prone in throwing interceptions. I think we're going to have to force him into... Give me, give me two turnovers for the defense. If we can get two turnovers and not turn the ball over on our side, I think we win this game. I'm going to go with a 24 to 28 Titans win. Woo! I have talked a lot, and I'm pretty sick of it by now. And You're, you yeah. are too, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, so, Caleb, uh. I, I, need, I need to know your keys. I need to know your prediction. I need to know your final score. So, th I, so three needy. things. I, I need, you I'm, need three things from me. I'm very needy, yes. Okay. My key kind of came to me as we were breaking down this game for all you viewers out there. Mm -hmm. Because of a, lot of the, a lot of the categories we were comparing ended up being extremely even as, as we broke them down with the players, with the overall team stats. And looking at this Pittsburgh team with the, with the talent they have on offense, I think the key for the Titans, which we've been very good at this year, might I say, My is not giving up the big play. Now, I know we gave up a seven-yard touchdown to A.J. Green last week, but honestly, that's kind of been an, an anomaly for the Titans' defense this year. Mm -hmm. We've been very good at that. Yep. However, the Steelers' offense is extremely good at creating massive offensive plays. Just look at Juju Smith's 97-yard seven, yeah. touchdown against the Lions. We can't give up the big play to the Steelers' offense. And if we do that, I think we'll be able to control the pace of the game and win the game. I think we win this one 20-16. to 16. Hmm. I hope that happens, but what we hope for, I mean, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. There's only one way to truly know who comes out on top in uh, these uh, mansion. Uh, 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 uh. You know, Justin, it's, it's uh, Madden is actually starting to stress me out now because uh, uh, we're actually six and three on our Madden season, and the Titans are six and three, and it's been going pretty hand in hand with how we've been playing. So uh, it puts a lot of pressure on our, on our Madden games. Yeah, I'm already I'm getting sweaty palms just thinking about it. Can we handle the pressure? Oh man! Well, you better stick around and see. I'm ready. Well, I'm don't ready. stick around, but click off of this video and go click on the Madden video. Yes. Uh, so that is it. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Twitter. Check this guy out. I don't think this dancing bear gets enough respect. He shows up to work every single video and does his job, just dancing away. Also, we have a Patreon. Patreon. Check out the Patreon. Consider donating some money to help support this channel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah. I just got really nervous. <clears throat> Jesse and his gang no no notoriety no, no what gained notoriety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you read? It? <laughs> no, it's no, 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 gosh. It's the it's it's the it's the drugs. Forever secure their seat on the AFC elite, unlike the other normal. <laughs> <laughs> <Good grief. laughs> Jesse, along with his brother. <laughs> Jesse, I was just, I was taking it for what it was. Jesse, along. <laughs> Best we can here at Titans Carry Titan on my wayward son. There'll, There'll be, be peace when you are done. done. <laughs> Keep going. Keep um, going. Uh, uh, All right. It's a team game. Breaking news, Papa John's apologizes for blaming poor sales on the NFL player protest. Yeah, right, dude. Just make better pizza. <laughs> we were... It, it was interrupting. Sorry. Uh...